Hi, Sarah Banas here, Learn to Craft. I'm going to show you today how to make a sublimation tumbler. These are incredibly easy. They're all the rage right now. Everybody loves them. They do really well at shows and um, private sales. They're just, they're incredibly popular. You can put anything you want on them. Um, any picture you can print, you can put on a sublimation tumbler. So what you're going to need is you're going to need, first off, either a sublimation printer or a converted inkjet printer. If you're not familiar with how to convert an inkjet printer, um, it's incredibly easy. I'll link in the video description. When you're looking at the video under the video, there's a drop down. If you click on that, <clears throat> excuse me, it'll expand. And I'll link in there a video on how to convert an inkjet printer. Um, it's, it's like I said, it's incredibly easy. So you're gonna need uh, either a sublimation printer or a converted inkjet. You're gonna need a uh, tumbler. These are PYD Life. I really like these. They were actually kind enough to send me um, some tumblers, some tape, which I really like, sublimation paper and um, a press so that I can show you guys how well their products work. Um, I will link all of this in the video description. These are super high quality. Uh, the tape, let me show you the tape. The tape is really nice. So oftentimes with sublimation tape, it'll come in like a brown or a yellow. This is better. This this doesn't, so the brown or yellow can sometimes leave like a, um, almost like a mark on your, on your products. This does not. So this is what you want. I'll link this in the video description. Okay. and their paper works really well too. So let's go ahead and get started. What you're going to need to do is you're going to need to measure. Uh, if you don't know the dimensions of your tumbler, you're going to need to measure it, right? So this is our tumbler. You can, if you have like something like this, a flexible tape, you can just always, you know, go ahead and do that. Uh, you always want to do it on the top rim so that you know that you're not, you know, going like that with it. So if you do not have a flexible measuring tape, there's an easy workaround. Take a piece of paper, take it into a strip, and then take that and run that right along the rim. Make sure that you are right on the rim. And then take a pen. And right where the two meet up. Make a little tiny knot right there. Okay. And that'll give you, then you can just measure it on a regular um, ruler or whatever. So this is going to be, let's see. That is nine and just over a quarter. So that is nine and um, I'm gonna call that, oh, that's, so nine and a quarter and then another half of a quarter. So 12, so I'm gonna call it 9.35. So that's 9.35 wide by, straight down tiny dot at the bottom and then my height is exactly eight but I am going to do eight 0.05 when I print because I want to make sure that I get this bottom rim totally covered. I like it to be the whole thing so you don't see any white at all. Okay, so that's how you get your dimensions. Easy enough. The next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put on a pair of gloves. Okay, because what you're going to do is you're going to get any bits off of here, any oil that could have gotten on here from your hands. You want to make sure that you get that all off of there, okay? So actually, you know what? Let's, before we get into this, let's go ahead and let's go over to um, the printer and we'll print first and then we'll clean off our cut. 
Okay, so here we are. We are in Silhouette Studio. You can print from any program that allows you to print to the size that you want your design to be. So Silhouette Studio, Inkscape is free. You can get that at Inkscape inkscape.org um, that's for pc or mac um, there's lots of programs you can print from so let's go ahead and the first thing we're going to do is let's size this to the size that we're going to print to which we determined was um, 9.35 wide but we're actually going to go to 9.37 wide i want it just to be a little bit long a little bit wider to make sure that we don't end up with any line of demarcation so make sure that your lock is locked and then change your width to 9.37. And now my height is going to be a little bit higher than what I need it, but I'm not going to bother slicing that off of there because what's going to happen is just such a small amount. It's not going to matter because what's going to happen is that I'll just go over the edge a little bit and then it'll end up giving us a perfect edge on the top. So, so that's, that's fine. Um, let me just, before we go any further, let me just say if this video is interesting to you or helpful, like the video, but also subscribe to my channel. I come out with new videos once or twice a week, just lots of neat ways to make you a better crafter, cricket, silhouette, scanning cut, um, sublimation. So lots of neat ways to make you a better crafter, but also a better designer so that you can start making your own designs. I have fantastic design series coming out very shortly. Um, you're not going to want to miss that. So subscribe to my channel. You'll get the notification when the new videos come out. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add a name to this. And just, I'll link this in the video description as well. Um, I'm going to link this design. I'm going to link all the PYD life stuff we're using, the tape, the paper, the tumblers, the press is fantastic. I'll link a video on how to, um, how to, uh, well, I'll link a video on how to um, convert a, uh, printer and then I'll link a video on this as well. I'm going to, and also I'll link our Facebook group. We have a ton of Facebook groups. Sublimation for beginners is one that you definitely want to be in. There's about 90,000 members in there. Super friendly, super helpful, super knowledgeable. Um, so join us there. I'll link that in the video description as well. When you're looking at the video on YouTube underneath, there's like a drop down. Click on that. That'll expand. You'll find all of the information linked inside of there. But what the reason that I got into that is what I'm also going to link in there is something that we're going to do right now is we're going to use font glyphs. If you're not familiar with how to use font glyphs, it's incredibly easy. I'll link how to do it on both Cricut and Silhouette on PC, Mac, and iOS. So you, you can learn how to do it. It's incredibly easy and incredibly important to design. So the font that we are going to use is called Sweet Boho. I'm going to link that in the video description as well. It is a fantastic font. I just got it recently. Absolutely love it. So I will link that in the video description and you should get it also. So I'm going to change the color of this. I don't generally go with black. I usually go with like a slate gray. I just think it looks a little bit more elegant than flat black, especially with the pink. Okay. And now what we're going to do is, like I was saying, we're going to switch these out for a couple of glyphs. Glyphs are incredibly easy. Like I said, I'll link it all in the video description on how to do this if you're not already familiar. So we are switching out the S first. Okay, and then let's switch out this H. And let's use this H. Okay, so now what I want to do, if I just take this and I put this on top here, it looks okay. Um, but that's not what I want to do. I want to take it and I want to offset it. I will also, um, so offset is incredibly easy, but I will link uh, just a quick video in the video description. If you're not familiar with offset, um, I will link a video in the video description on how to offset um, both on Cricut and Silhouette. Then you're going to want to change that to white, change your offset to white and get rid of that. Now select all of it, right click and group. Okay. So now, now you can see how, how that offset gives it a nice little something extra. So I always struggle with if I should run my name up or if I should run names down the cup 
this one, I'm going to run it up. You don't want it. You don't want it up against your edges because you don't want it um, being right on your seam. You also do not want to put it too high or too low. You don't want it right on the bottom of your cup and you don't want it going into this. So about that much of the top of this is coming off right there. So you don't want to, you know, run it into that. So this is probably just about perfect right here. Okay, so now what we're going to do, I'm going to group this all together. And now we are ready to print. So let's get rid of this. When you are printing, you are um, mirroring your image, okay? So in your printer settings, you can mirror in your printer settings and you can set it up so that um, it automatically mirrors for you on every time you print so that you don't ever forget to do this. You can also mirror it like this, flip horizontally, and that mirrors it as well, okay? So now I'm gonna go to File, Print, out and make sure that's fitting on there nicely and it is looks good looks good and now I'm gonna go to print I'm gonna choose my printer that I want to use and and if you ever don't see your printer sometimes actually when I first did this if you're ever on if you're on silhouette and you don't see it it's a little bit strange because it starts over here and you don't realize it but you can just slide over to your printer and then I'm going to go to print and now it's going to print. So let me go get this print and I'll show you how to wrap it. Okay, so now we're going to wrap the tumbler. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take your print and see it's mirrored. Okay, you're going to want to take your print and you're going to want to cut off the excess. So you only have your print. Nice and even. Okay. Not exactly perfect, and I actually do want it to be exactly perfect. You know, but if I try to actually, I, I am going to let that go because if I try to, if I try to cut it any lower, it's just going to chop it up. So that's okay. That's fine like that. So then for this, I'm going to do it this side. And you want to take it so that you are lining this up perfectly. Right on there like that. And... That, and that one is a perfect cut. I'll link this um, this Cricut cutter in the description as well. I've had a lot of different um, types of paper cutter like this, and I really like this one. Okay, that is just a bit. Let me just oops. Just make sure I'm getting this on here perfectly so that I'm getting a good, good seam. Okay, and then I'm going to go just like that. That's good. Okay, and now what you're going to do is... Throw your gloves on. And like I said earlier, so this will keep, once you have um, cleaned off your tumbler, it'll keep you from getting the oil from your hands back on there again. Okay, and these are the PYD Life, the 20 ounce. And what did I do? Okay. Might well, have to give me one second. I had brought, oh, here it is. Okay. You're gonna want alcohol wipes or you can just have a bottle of alcohol. Um, these are nice because they are lint free. So you don't have to worry about the lint from your, um, like if you put it on with a paper towel, that getting back onto there. So, so that is nice. So open this up. 
And you're gonna wanna wipe this down real good. This will get any oils off there. Actually, we can take this top right off there. See how nice that top comes off? These are really, really nice tumblers. So, and like I said, I will link these in the description. I'll link everything in the description. It'll be super easy. If you wanna get into this, it'll be super easy for you to um, locate everything that you need. And I'm telling you, these, like like I said, fairs, shows, especially, um, at least at the time of taping, summer's right around the corner, and um, these do really well. Especially, like, you know, local fairs, if you put things for, um, that are part of the town, like if you have a, you know, uh, Crick Bank or something like that in the town that everybody in the town knows, and you put that on there, lots of people travel back home from out of state or out of town to come to... Um, the local festival, so that type of stuff goes really, really well. Okay, so now you're going to want to let it dry for just a second. Okay. okay. And then once it's dry, and yeah, it's dry, you're going to want to take a lint roller, and you're going to want to lint roll it. Just make sure you don't have any little bits of lint on it. Someone should build a concave lint roller. <laughs> that wouldn't, it wouldn't work, but it's a good idea. So you can get it right up on the edge. Just a little time consuming, but it's an important step not to skip. If you have any little tiny piece of lint on there, it'll leave like a weird little demarcation on your cut. Way too much time and effort into these to do that, okay? So now this, this is the piece de resistance. So this is, I just recently got this and it's a complete game changer for, um, for taping. So it's really nice because it, it cuts it for you. See how it cuts the pieces for you, or you can use this and cut it the exact size that you want. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna take this, and we're gonna put it right, right like that, right on the very, very, very bottom. Okay, and then that's gonna be a perfect seam. That is gonna be nice. Okay, so you're gonna want to get it so that it's overlapped just by this it's not even really overlapped but there's just like just a tiny 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 little bit but you also want it even so there is a little bit of a um skill to this that you get over time just get it just exactly right and you also you want it as tight as you can get it on there but that's where this comes in so handy being able to um grab just the pieces like that that you need and not messing around trying to trying to cut them okay and you want to get it all the way down I should show you so that you can see okay all the way down and then you're going to want to make sure you get that all the way down to the bottom And then tip it down, tip down your bottom. Just a little bit, okay? Cause you're gonna, you, 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 I'll show you, we're gonna tape the bottom off. So just crinkle it down like that so that it tapes really good on there. Okay. And then you're gonna take and right along the bottom so that you're getting all of it touching the bottom. This is gonna be super pretty.
Okay, so now that's all of our bottom done. Okay, and now, so let's go ahead. Again, just make sure that you're getting it as taut as you can. You don't want any wrinkles in there. And you want just nice, tight bond on there. That is that. Now, I do also do the top because that'll give you a nice, so just flip it right over the top, but make sure your top is nice and tight again so that you're, you want to, so do you see how I'm kind of like flipping that under? You want to make sure that you're not, you're not getting folds where it's going to sublimate. Okay right over, flip it right over, over, over. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this, you can see I'm just flipping that right inside. Did you see how I taped it and flipped it right inside? over so you can see it a little better what I'm doing. I'm going to tape that right along the edge and then I'm going to flip that tape and I'm going to push it right from like a from like the side and then coming into the middle and I'm going to flip it right inside there. So maybe take even two hands and just flip it right inside of there. Okay. And then all the way around the edge. And this is gonna give me a perfect top rim. Actually, at this point, I can take these gloves off. I do not need the gloves anymore. <clears throat> okay, almost done here. Okay, so now we have everything taped off nice and solid on there. The only other thing that we need to do before we can press this is you're going to take a couple of sheets of copy paper or butcher paper. And what that does is it's going to, if you get any blowout, so the way sublimation works is, it, um, I don't know if we went over this earlier in the video, but it, it, it um, vaporizes the ink and then the ink adheres to the substrate, the in this case, the tumbler. So if you have any blowout, they call it. Um, you shouldn't on this because it's all taped off, but if you have any blowout, this paper catches it, okay? So we're gonna take and, and then that way it can't get onto your press. So we're gonna take and we're gonna roll this. And again, you wanna keep this tight. Um, generally, I use two sheets, but I'm up in my craft room and um, the rest of my printer paper is downstairs. So I'm gonna use one and that should be fine. And then just like that. Okay, okay so now we are all ready. You can go ahead and you can um, push that in just in case there is any blowout that'll catch it. Push that in and in. And now we're all ready to go to our press. So let's go to the press. Okay, so here we are at the press. This is a fantastic press, highly recommend it. Uh, I will link it in the video description. The nice thing about this press is it can do multiple sizes. It can do 
um, 20 and 30 ounce tumblers. Uh, I'm gonna have to check. I think I might be able to do 16 ounce tumblers also, but I can do 20 and 30 ounce tumblers and also 11 through 15 ounce mugs, which is really nice. So you can see that I've set it. I have my, um, I have my temperature set at 360 and I have my, my time set at 50 seconds. Now we're gonna do um, two sets at, at 50 seconds. We're gonna do it at 50 seconds and then we're gonna turn it and we're gonna do it again at 50 seconds. Um, I have my heat gloves. I'll link these in the description as well. If you do wanna have a set of these to protect yourself, I'm gonna grab my mug or my tumbler rather. And we are at 360. So I should have checked first. Let me take another tumbler that I have down here already. And let me just let me just try to um give me a second here. Oh, I don't have any blank paper. I was gonna see if I if the I should have checked my um to see how tight this is first, to see if that needs to be adjusted. So just give me just one second here. You know, I'm gonna go ahead and just put it in there and I'll do it that way, that'll be fine. So I'm gonna put that in there. And let's just see, yeah, that's way too loose. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna tighten this up quite a bit. You want good, even, firm pressure on this. It doesn't have to be um, super tight, but it does. It does need to be firm. Sorry, I should have done that before we started recording, but I did not think to do it unprepared but that's okay now you can see how to tighten it generally speaking you would find that you would tighten this before you um before you so that's perfect um generally speaking you would tighten that before you put your before you started the heat press um, before you started the heat on it And you can see it, you can see the temperature coming down. So like I said, you, you generally do that before you turn the heat press on so there's no heat when you're doing it. Um, but we're going by the seat of our pants here. So <laughs> uh, that should be fine though. Okay, it's gonna count down. Now on this press, it won't beep when it gets down to zero, you just kind of have to keep an eye on it. I actually prefer that because um, a lot of times I'm pressing late at night. Oh, I'm wrong, this press does beep. I was thinking that this one does not. Okay, that's okay. So it's actually prob probably better to alert you anyways. Okay. Now another 50 seconds like this. But you can see, I mean, you can see how heavy duty this machine is. Like this isn't um, just a, you know, something that you're going to use 200 times and then it's going to give you problems. This is like a long time machine. This is like a really good one. So we'll let it get down to zero. This is gonna be super pretty. Okay, so now we're gonna let this cool down just a little bit. And then once it's cooled down a little bit, 
we'll go ahead and unwrap it and do the big reveal. It's gonna be super duper pretty. Okay, so let's get this unwrapped. This is gonna be pretty. Okay, the first thing you wanna do is take off your cotton paper. A little bit warm, not too bad. So just a heads up, that cools off pretty quickly. It's only been maybe less than like three or four minutes. So let me actually, so this, best thing ever. It's a weeding pen, but it's also fantastic for this. I don't want to scratch my cup though. Once you get it started, it's... Pretty easy, you just gotta get it started. Okay. Get that off. And so I wanna I just wanna show you this real quick. So remember how I was telling you how um the the uh tape that is yellow or brown leaves a mark on there? See how there's no mark at all? When you peel that up, there's nothing on your actual cup. The parts of the tape that get on the cup, that's, I've seen some really beautiful cups get ruined by using um, cheap tape. So for lack of a better way of putting it, um, low quality tape, I guess I should say. Because even the low quality stuff is not always inexpensive. This tape is fantastic. This is what you want. And I'll link this in the video description. Get in there, get in there. Ooh, look at that. That's gonna be pretty. Ooh, wee. Okay. That's gonna be beautiful. Oh, wow, 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 wow. Look at that. Oh my goodness, look at it. Look at how pretty that is. Oh my goodness, it's beautiful. That is absolutely beautiful. I should have gone one shade darker with um, with uh, uh, my name because that gray is a little bit too light on there. I wish I would have gone like one shade darker, but look at how pretty that is. Look at those greens. Oh, wow. This is just spectacular. Oh, it's so pretty. Oh, my goodness. I love it. And so you can see how we got the perfect edge on the bottom. See that? and the perfect edge on the top. There's no ghosting, there's no nothing. It's just a good, solid, perfect press. That is beautiful. Oh, wow. Yep, the only thing that I should have done a little bit differently is I should have, um, because unfortunately it ends up, my, my gray turned out a little bit too, um, I wish I had done that like one shade darker and then I would have gotten a good, solid slate, slate, slate uh, gray on it. But other than that, this is absolutely spectacular. Look at those greens and those peaches. Wow, look at the browns on that. Do you see that? I don't know if you can see that or not. Wow, that is so beautiful. Look at the clarity and how clean that pressed. I'm telling you that that if you do not, if you're, so you can also press in a, um, in a convection toaster oven, but all the time I see people with ghosting and with just constant issues plus it takes way longer in a convection oven um and and you just you end up ruining so many of your blanks blanks are you know i mean that's that's money down the drain when you're ruining them not to mention your print and your tape and everything else you know if you're gonna do this it's better just to invest in quality equipment so that you're you know so you're getting what you you're not wasting your time and energy and money on on things getting ruined um, definitely recommend this press, but oh man, look at that. It's perfect, perfect edges. Absolutely beautiful. Let's put the top on. That is ready to go. Look at that. Beautiful. Have a good day. Make sure that you do like the video, subscribe to the channel, um, join us in the group. I'm going to link it in the, in the, in the description of the video. You will love sublimation for beginners. It's, it's a fantastic group. You'll learn so much there. So, um, join us there.
I'll link all of the materials. I'll link uh, the, the tumblers. I'll link the paper. I'll link the tape, uh, the, the PYD Life Press. I'll link everything in the video description. Uh, I'm going to link this fantastic thing that you absolutely need. Tape dispenser. You need this in your life. Makes a huge difference. And that's it. If you have any questions at all, you can ask them in the um, under the video or uh, better yet, approach me in the group. You're always welcome to come talk to me in the group. I'm always in there. Always happy to help. That's it. Have a good day. Bye.